Lex Friedman and Elon Musk. Now, two geniuses, whether you like Musk or not, he is a genius. They had an interview recently and I watched some of it. In fact, I sped it up. I put it in double speed. And this meant that it's instead of being eight hours and 40 minutes long, it's, um, yeah, it's just over four hours long, which is much more palatable. Trust me, I can't sit there and listen to anything for that long. This is so long, I thought I'd break down the most important parts of this eight hour, well, let's just say it's not close enough to nine hours, so a nine hour interview. How the hell these two guys could do this interview for nine hours is beyond me. I just don't understand it. It's amazing. And it does show you the incredible genius of these two men. But here are the main points that I think are the most important takeaways from this interview. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. And guys, I just want to put it out there. I do have recently got a new solar system on my home here. It's awesome. I'm pretty excited about it. So I want to just let people know if you want to know who I used for that solar system, I'll put a link in the description below. Now, of course, it's an Australian company, but they've been great. I just want to say to those guys, thank you so much for your help. And yeah, everything's gone really well. Now, Elon Musk, Lex Friedman have done a series of different interviews, but this is a new interview. This was just posted up last week. Here are some of the topics they talked about. How many bots Tesla would manufacture? Musk theorizes that Tesla will get to the point where they would build 1 billion robots per year, 1 billion. And Musk also mentions that, you know, uh, this is integral to Tesla's business model. That the automotive, he's basically saying the automotive industry is almost so small, it's irrelevant in comparison to the theoretical size of the human labor, not the theoretical size, but the actual size of the human labor market. The human labor market is astronomical. He's basically, Musk is saying, race, EVs are a race to the bottom now. We've got China involved. But if we avoid that and look at where the real money is, it's in artificial intelligence, and that comes to for self-driving. Tesla has to solve for self-driving for the company to truly succeed and robotics. Basically, Musk is saying, you know, he's not going out there and saying it completely explicitly, but he's saying that that's what Tesla has pivoted to. It's a race to the bottom for cars. And Musk says, Musk, he's got an amazing memory for someone who never sleeps. I don't know how his long-term memory can be this good. Because guys, you don't get much sleep, your long-term memory is normally shithouse. And I don't know how Elon Musk's memory is so good. He just remembers all these random facts. One of the random facts that I noticed, getting on a tangent here, but one random fact he mentions he knows the birth rate of like the world's worst countries. He, he knew it off my hand and he's talked about it. He says, South Korea, their birth rate is 0.8. In other words, South Korea's population is going to decline so quickly over the next few decades. So anyway, Musk's memory is incredible. And when he talks about the number of bots that Tesla is going to build, he's really looking at how much money Tesla can make from that, replacing humans in factories, labor in general. Uh, you know, you, I'm assuming, will all apparently have a robot at home, kind of like Rocky, remember the Rocky movies and there's a robot, but that robot will be able to do everything for you. Imagine how lazy people are gonna get. So that's what Tesla needs to do, Musk says. Now Musk and Lex, they discuss some other issues. I wanna run through them quickly. Telepathy, telepathy, how does that work? Of course, with Neuralink, the power of the human mind. The human mind is extremely powerful. And they talk about the future of Neuralink. Will we merge with AI, merging with artificial intelligence? Now, this goes on for a long time. Very short summary, but Lex and Musk, I believe, both think that we will merge with artificial intelligence. That's the kind of a way that we can protect ourselves from being destroyed by the robots. And honestly, this is called the singularity. I've, when I first created this channel, I called it the singularity because this absolutely fascinates me. One of the things about the singularity is that there is meant to be incredible abundance. Tony Sieber talks about this, Peter Diamandis talks about the singularity. The singularity should bring an abundance that you cannot possibly imagine because creativity, the ability for us to, with artificial general intelligence as well, AGI, of course, that will come, will also have the ability to create so much that we just cannot currently do. So will we merge with AI? Well, Musk thinks we will. What do you think Neuralink's all about? Neuralink is not about saving the world in terms of saving people who can't see and all this kind of like uh, altruistic means. Do you think Elon Musk is really an altruist? No, sorry guys, he's not. He's a venture capitalist. He's a, he's a genius, he's brilliant. He's not an altruist. I mean, let's be real here. Neuralink, the end game for Neuralink was the singularity. If you really think it was about saving people's sight, sorry guys, you need to know more about who Elon Musk is. Human beings, come on, all of us. 
none of us are truly altruistic. If we believe we are, we are utterly arrogant and in denial. That's what I think anyway. What are our true motivations? Where are they coming from? Well, yeah, Neuralink, that's what it is. The end game, we merge with AI. And that's what Neuralink is basically aiming for. And to be honest, Musk is miles ahead of everyone else. Who else is doing what Neuralink is doing? No one is doing it. That's what we should be concerned about. This could give Elon Musk kind of like God level power. If you could combine that with the compute speed, now getting to compute speed, I'll get there in a minute. Musk talks about that too. Optimus. So Musk talks about Optimus. He talks about the hand, the difficulty to manufacture the hand. And Musk says basically getting that hand to work properly like a human beings is 50% of the work involved in building the Optimus robot, 50%. And he says, basically Tesla went down the route of putting the motors in the fingers, but they made the fingers way too big. So they had to move the motors, for the actuators for the hand, they had to move them into the arm. Basically solve these issues with having hand dexterity. Now Musk and Lex, they get off track for a little while. After they talk about this stuff, they go to Elon's approach to problem solving. They talk about history and geopolitics. Musk has obviously read a lot of books about history. He believes the United States as a civilization is doomed as all, he's basically saying that all civilizations are doomed. Eventually they have their rise and fall. And he talks about why that is. Population, he says, is a big part of the reason, but there's other reasons as well. He gets on and talked about um, the collapse of empires. Why have empires collapsed? Birth rate, getting back to South Korea, birth rate's a big reason, but there are other reasons as well. Then he talks about aliens and curiosity, um, neural dust. You know, dust is an interesting one. Won't get into that here. And then the history of brain computer interfaces. So to get back to Neuralink, Neuralink appears to be probably the number one issue they talk about here. Essentially, this is the most fascinating concept, I think, right now. Uh, a lot of engineers, a lot of uh, futurists, essentially. Now, Musk actually talks about how Neuralink works. And this gives you a little bit of an insight into just how intelligent Musk truly is. Now, whether you like him or you don't, doesn't really matter. I'm not saying you should like him but he's very intelligent and he understands how the Neuralink interface actually works, the engineering and the software behind it. Musk talks about vertical integration, how vertical integration is absolutely necessary for any product, not just cars. It's necessary for all kinds of manufacturing, whether that be mobile phones or potentially robots as well, particularly though, robo taxis. Now, Musk, Musk and Lex, they get back, they go back again to Neuralink and they talk about Neuralink brain surgery details, how that actually works, implanting the Neuralink in yourself, how that would work and how in the future that would work. And Musk says that the company will win the artificial intelligence and the robotics game is the one with the best and the fastest AI compute. AI compute is kind of a fascinating issue here. And, and guys, Brian Wang, from Next Big Future, he talks about what he thinks based on his projections from Elon Musk XAI and where they're at today, what they're planning. He gives some uh, predictions here on the speed of Grok version nine, which would come out in theory in 2029. It would have 1.2 yotta flops. Uh, it would consume six gigawatts of energy. So in other words, basically it looks like Musk is going to do everything in his power to win, to literally win the compute contest. It's a compute race. And Musk is saying, it is a race. Whoever has the best compute power, they'll win the race. So Musk is willing to invest whatever money he needs to invest to win this race. Now, 1.2 yotta flops, it's hard to really explain that because at this point in time, XAI uh, or Grok 2 is 80 exaflops. Now in theory, Grok 3 would be 400. And then two, uh, it's an order of magnitude higher to get to 1.2 yotta flops. I mean, that's almost like saying today's analog, the future will be a super, 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 super turbo speed digital. That's what we're going from. And that's what Musk plans with XAI. Now he's also worked out the actual cost per chip. And the cost would, in theory, the cost would actually increase, but the productivity and the speed of the compute would go up so much that it would mean that it would be worthwhile. It'd be a worthwhile cost for this for this incredible compute speed, essentially. Now, DJ SEO or DJ CEO is the COO and president of Neuralink. And he talked about his goal of creating neural dust. What exactly is neural dust? Well, they would use ultrasound waves because neural dust would work in the body better, apparently. Ultrasound would be used to power the devices 
and get data back somehow. Now, Musk says that um, an approximation that it would take 200 to 300 million connections to achieve a full mind meld with the biological brain and computer. So sort of like um, essentially how does this chip integrate with the body? Well, this new dust would essentially be a way of like implanting something artificial in the body to get everything to integrate with Neuralink. In theory, you could stay alive forever. I mean, as long as the brain is kept alive somehow, you don't necessarily maybe even need the body. That's, that's what I'm thinking anyway, guys. So let me know what you think about that. The singularity idea is very, very fascinating, but it's also a bit concerning about what could potentially happen. Now, Elon Musk really made it clear, I think, in this interview that his main goal is merging artificial intelligence with humanity. In other words, Elon Musk is wanting to play God. He's wanting to be the person responsible for the singularity. And he just might be. It could happen. I don't know if I like this. I don't know what I think about it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I hope you, I gave you a, a good summary in, what, 15 minutes of what was a nine-hour interview. It's a real mission. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.